Okay guys, here we are. We were gonna we're gonna keep with the hobby starters kit thing and I thought after you got your stuff it'd be cool to do a little video and show you how to use some of the stuff if you knew this kind of thing. And I know I said that uh that hobby starter kit was more like for miniatures and things, but honestly what you've got you can also do good to model kits. So the kit we're gonna do and build to sort of show you how to get used to using your tools is this SD Gundam or well correction it is a Zhao Yun Togis but this is basically an SD Gundam model kit what does SD mean it means super deformed it means they're little chibi Gundams there's the box here's all the Japanese there's some art see how they kinda got like the big heads and big eyeballs sorry I think the the camera's trying to read that QR code here's a preview of what the model kit let's see model kit will hopefully sort of kinda look like when we're done not necessarily cause mine at least I'm probably not gonna put the stickers on but you can or you can paint it cause depending on I'll look at it, but depending on how painted the neck it's going to be, I might paint this one. So, okay, you went online, wherever you got your minis or your model kit. What do you want to do first? The very first thing you should do, and I've already cut the tape on this guy, is you want, if it's a model kit like this, you want to open it up. Sorry, guys, try not to. Try not to hurt the box lid because you can use this for display. You open her up, okay? Sorry if that glare is a little much, guys. So what you got here is your instructions. It's got a bunch of information about the model kit and the mobile suit on the back. Pretty much the same thing as the front. Sorry, I'm trying to hit the box there. Makes any sense. Sketch. You open it up in here. I think it's got these have got a little mini comic book and they fold out like this. There's your comic. Here's maybe how some looks like some of his weapons will go with another one of the SD kits. Here's your instructions that we'll get to as we go. But the first thing you want to do is in the front page here it's basically an included parts list or sprue list. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six sprues and a sheet of stickers. Okay. So then you want to come through here real quick and make sure you've got all your sprues. Usually not a problem, but things can happen at the factory or where they pack it. So. Always a good idea first thing. Just make sure you've got all your parts. See we got sticker sheet, an orange translucent sheet, and a white or sprue, a white sprue, orange sprue. So two. There's another bag. started here. Got a black sprue and a kind of gold sprue. As you can see, I'll show you a little bit better. Get the packing out of the way. Some of our gold bits. Some of our black bits. Yeah, we got one more pack here to hit real quick. That off can. 
Sorry, the sticker sheet's still in there. Got another white spray and another black spray. Now, what you do is you can count them, and I said what six one, two, three, four, five, six. So, probably everything's here, but if you really wanted to be real, sure. And this is just a little bit of an education. The instructions are Japanese. Well, that doesn't matter because when you need a part, each sprue is labeled with a letter. And each, let's see if I can get it where you can see them. Can you guys see it? Yeah, there's a, get the light catch. See the numbers in those squares? That's how you find your parts. So you don't need to know Japanese or anything. You just literally follow the instructions. So. We've got A, B, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, G, A, B, C, D, G, and H, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, G, and H. C, A, B, C, across the top there. D, G, and H plus the good sticker sheet so we know we have our all of our sprues or at least we should have all of our parts and the reason you do this is because when you get your kit this is the best time if you got to pack it back up and send it to whoever you got it from versus if I just assumed I had all my parts and I got into this guy which again this is a little SD Gundam couldn't take long but you're halfway through the project and you realize you don't have a part. So then, and I don't know how hard that's going to be to get them to refund you money at that point or they might think you just broke apart. But this way, hey, if I caught it here, I can throw all these sprues back in the back in the box. Hey, I didn't have this sprue. You can see it there and it's just a good way to do it. Now the next step is we need to wash our parts. And I may not do a lot of talking. There may just be some video of me showing. We'll see. Because when they come out of the molds, they put a release agent in there so they pop out of the molds. Usually not a problem with these plastic models. But you don't want to be putting paint or stickers on it. And it's got a residue on it and it won't hold. So it's just a good practice to take them to any sink you got. Your bathroom sink, your kitchen sink. Get you some dish detergent, run you some warm water, put them in there, and take an old toothbrush. I got this here toothbrush, old nasty toothbrush, got cat hairs and all sorts of simple green and remove paint in it, and just wash your parts and let them dry. That way, if you're putting on stickers or if you decide to paint it, you're not fighting some oil that could be on the parts. So. Next step, I'll show you me doing that super quick. It'll probably be on my phone, so you won't probably see me wash it, but, you know, just to get the idea across. And I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, hey, everybody. So, we let it, we dried our parts, so let our parts dry overnight. So, we're going to start building today. As you can see, right down here is what we're going to build next. We're going to build the right leg. I built a leg and an arm off cam for the written article. So, we've got an arm, a leg, waist towards their head, and like a gun to build. So we're going to build this part next, but I'm probably going to take the instructions off screen so the camera doesn't always try to focus on them. So there's our three steps. What I'd recommend usually is that, you know, you take it a step at a time. Or I'll have them folded up, probably up here off camera in case I need to reference something. But I've already put one leg together, so I'm going to cut what we need off the sprue and then trim everything up so where did I put my there's my two sets of side cutters okay right here I know from experience this is the foot we need so we're gonna cut that and like I told you when we were buying them you want to cut the first time as far away from the part as you can so with my hobby cutters Come here and just cut them three little gate bits off. Let's see. <laughs> what 
Why did I go like that? They're usually not that bad, but sometimes you'll go get that last piece of plastic and it'll go shooting off, so it's better to do like that and sort of, if it do try to shoot off on you, you'll have it. So I know we need that. Let's see. We don't need anything else here. I need it. I need what? Was it five and four up of here? Yep, five and four right here. These two. So we're these actually it doesn't matter if you stress them; they're hidden by other parts. But we'll keep the good practice going. And that's one thing you learn as you build these. Sometimes you can you can cut a few corners. But if you know a part's going to be hidden by another part where they're not going to see it, you may not need to do as much body work, per se, on the part. Okay, there's that. Like, that guy's just a peg to hold a side skirt on, so we don't have to do a whole lot of cleanup on that at all. I know I'll need this guy here. I'm in the middle of the screen we're cutting all this at least where you can see what I'm doing sorry if the things fighting for focus here a little bit okay so that's the hip bit and I need I'm also go ahead and grab that little side skirt part that I know I'm gonna need which is right here Okay guys, we're back. Sorry, I was trying to adjust a few things, but there's the little side skirt bit we need. So we'll go ahead and, go ahead and chop this bad boy off. Okay, now what do you do next? Now, you guys won't have the other pair of side cutters. You'll have these, and you will just want to cut closer and then clean up any nub or what's left. I have a slightly better pair of cutters, but they've got sort of delicate blades in them. So what we're going to do is trim up the rest of these. So right there. Like, see this? I know I don't need to work or worry about as much because that's a peg that's going to go into something. So that won't need a whole lot of extra time. Neither will this. Because this is another peg that goes into something you won't see. And then there's this little bit here. Which I know is a little bit... Well, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. But an example of some stuff you might have to clean up is... If it'll focus. Can you... You see that? There you go. There it was for a second. That little bird there on top of that point. We'll probably have, we'll have to go back and definitely sand that. There's also some seam lines. If you can see the little, which I don't think is going to focus for us. But there's little. There's a seam line on the outside of some of these parts. I'll try to get a shot of what the, the, the photos in the written review if you were really curious. So uh, we more or less trim that guy up. Okay, so we got everything cut out. So our next step is just to go back with some sandpaper and hit a few spots. Which we'll start off with this one because I know on here there's a few spots that will be a little burry. You probably will not be able to see them on the camera, but I can feel them. So we'll just take a little bit of our sandpaper that I've cut up and been using and you're probably just going to literally whether you know it touched because you cut the part off and you saw me cut it off just sort of give it a little bit of a a rub with the sandpaper 
because luckily this one I think it was just on the leading edge so you're just gonna sort of hit it a little bit and you'll probably be fine and I was like running my fingernail over it just to see you might be able to see there's a little bit of a raised area right there where we cut the uh, the piece of the sprue off so we'll we'll just hit that real quick a couple times with some thousand grit sandpaper and it's pretty good you know we didn't try not to come here because that does have a little bit of a raised area that's some detail but that one's pretty good let me pull in the other what are we going to see on this it's that ball bit so I think it's that little bit yeah this is the only bit we're going to see so I'm going to take a look at it real quick I mean that's pretty it's pretty solid on my end the rest of this I know is going to go be covered by that white thing so I'm going to call that good honestly it's how you learn to work a little faster like if you think it's going to cause a bind up to fit yeah you, you sand it down but if it's not going to be seen we might try the hobby knife approach then this one's a little bit deeper than I was thinking. And you take your hobby knife and you lightly scratch the area. You hear me? Sorry if that's really annoying sound. Sometimes it happens like that. Yeah, it's better. And our plastic's gonna be a little scratched up from that. So then we'll take the sandpaper again and just hit it a couple times to smooth out some of the scratches. Well, it's not scratches, it's just a little texture. It's not that bad. You can literally just do it a little bit and yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. Let's see here. Back of the back of the leg sorry guys fighting my my hair and sorry if the mount's creaking a little I gotta get in here around the camera so I can see and hopefully have what you guys can still see but we're gonna sort of do this a little bit sometimes it's a good idea to check where you're doing to make sure you're actually hitting where you what you think you are and not taking off a bunch of stuff you don't need to and or want to okay yeah that's most of it I can probably probably clean the rest of that up really easy with the sandpaper like I said sandpaper is your best friend and if it was more of a pronounced nub we would probably actually break out my files but most of these that I've seen so far I haven't been able to trim down not be able to trim down further enough with my with my uh, side cutters if you have to not a problem guys just remember a file you go one direction you don't do like sandpaper where you go you know back and forth you go one way with it or you'll chew up the plastic See, see, we can't just. Is it wasn't as bad on this front part as it was on the other. One. See if I do that a couple times. It's pretty good. It's not perfect. It's pretty close. And see, here's the thing. You will go through sandpaper, right? But keep them little scraps of sort of used sandpaper, because as you use them, and more of that sand comes off. They kind of get less grit, I guess, or you're using the paper. And sometimes that used soft bits of uh, sandpaper is good just to uh, take off just a little bit more. When maybe you don't want it quite as aggressive or as abrasive as it was when you first started. It sounds weird because you're like, well, you're already a thousand grit. 
how much less aggressive do you really want it to be? But sometimes taking an old bit of sandpaper is just what the doctor ordered. So we'll, we'll put this off to the side and I'll give them all one more look over probably. I'll probably pause the video and give them all one more good look over. Okay guys, we're back. I got everything sort of situated. You saw the instructions. I'm going to go a bit out of order because this is more about showing you guys how to use stuff than worrying about how the instruction manual says build things. Because I cut out three steps for worse the parts all at once. So, my advice is so you don't lose this little black bit. You check the instructions. The flat bit or the collary looking bit goes towards the white piece. So, there's our ball joint. And I also know that our foot's going to go on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and, there he goes, he popped in. Well, ball joint's not entirely accurate. It just does that. It doesn't. Okay, no, it will. That one wouldn't, but, so we don't lose our parts. Now, next is the upper leg, which is these two bits here. And i got to remember how they go in, because... It's kind of important. I think it's like this. Yes, maybe. Yeah, because then this will go in here. This is also important part of the dry fit. Now these, these couple of bits here I can glue this one and I might I'm trying to figure out just in case now some of the pieces on the hand on the arm I'll be able to show you gluing a little better because they actually kind of snap together now I always just to show you guys because I'm paranoid about this stuff I wipe some off and I come in here and I since it just sort of sits in here I'm going to try to hit a few bits and hope that'll be enough to sort of help hold that little black part in but it's kind of a snug fit so I feel like you'd really have to try to try to knock it out but just in case and then we go like that that's why we dry fitted first it's like okay how does this go in How's the best way to glue this? Because this doesn't need to move. This literally forms a joint. So I was less worried about that one moving. And then we can put our knee. What we'll do here is we'll come and put our little gold knee pad bit on. I'm not going to glue this till after I paint it. Because see, it's got those pegs there. When I'm done painting, I'll make it a point not to get primer in those holes. And I will glue this on so it's less likely to fall off. But it does slide on there pretty snug. It's, but it's just a precautionary thing on my end. Because I hate losing small pieces and having an incomplete thing. Another thing with this plastic glue is always pay attention where you're gluing. Because this, this here is our knee joint, right? We don't want glue in there. Because if it fuses these, that peg and that hole it's not going to be a joint anymore so always that's why dry fitting's a good idea and since these go together like that it makes them easy for disassembly to paint later then we want to take our pin here see our pin for the side skirt push that in that one I mean it's it's in there pretty good like, I might would have trouble get. I could get it out with a pair of tweezers, probably. But if need be, you can glue that to hold that in there. Because it doesn't need to move. But you would not glue this piece. Because that ball goes in that hole. And you want a little bit of play for the hip armor. So, there we got our other leg. So, we've got... Both legs built now, because I built one off camera, so we got we got a right and a left leg, so we're doing good. I ain't messed up nothing yet, at least. 
So what we'll build next is the waste. Because what I like to do is build mine so then we'll put the waist on and we'll have a standing pair of legs. It's just nice to see your suit come together. So put these off to the side. I'll pull the instructions back down here for like five seconds. I'm going to fold them so I can see we are here. Let's see. Sorry about the glare guys, but there, that's a pretty good shot of it. Doing them three steps, so I'm probably just going to honestly cut those parts out together so I'll put it up here away so it's not the way but I can see it so we need B12 G5 and D6 so B12 and I haven't covered this but as we sort of talked about when we were checking our parts list this is sprue B and then you just find what did I say 12 we want 12 which is right here if it'll since they're kind of embossed, it's, you can see the 18, I think you can see the 12, or the 8, there's the 12. So we'll do like we did last time, right? Cut the, cut it further away from the part to start with. And then we'll come back and trim it up, so we need a B12. Okay guys, sorry I had to let the puffer settle a minute. But I did some fiddling, ooh, I don't like where that one's at. Look real quick, and I think a lot of the some of these parts you're not gonna see that much of, so we can get away with a little laziness on some of our cleanup here, which is always nice just to get through things a little bit quicker. But I'm gonna have to do a dry fit to make the for sures, so we're gonna. Sorry, sometimes guys, when I get off camera, it's hard to hard to really make this where you guys can see. And then when I look at the screen, cause of lighting, I can't necessarily see where I'm at. So if it's not always super phantasmic, I'm sorry. I try to get better at it or work on how the light's set up. But let's see here. Most of this I don't think we're going to see, so I'm going to come over here and just trim it up real fast and see how all these go together. And then if I think it needs it, like I think that white piece, since it's on the outside, might need it, but I don't think the others will. So, look at our instructions. So. Now to glue this one, I'm just going to be cheap. We're just going to put glue in there and shove that thing in there. So we'll get us a little bit of glue. Take a little brush. Hit the inside corners of that square. Try to make sure a little bit gets in the back. And this stuff does stink a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It's not, to me, it's not that bad. So I always put the cap back on when I'm done so it don't dry out. And... I'm not huffing plastic glue fumes while I'm building because it will give you a headache because when I had to put my 40k guys together I did so many I was starting to get a headache so sometimes it's just better off to not so there we go set that in there see when that goes into that which I might knock these apart accidentally not a big deal if I do there's a front and back skirt now the rewarding part see there's a front our back got all the nice little details and I might try some panel lining when I paint it to pull, pop out some of these details I have to do some looking and thinking and then we got our legs off camera which are here and that ball joint goes in that hole right there you kind of heard it pop it wasn't a super big I mean you ain't got a lot of movement with that it moves a little. It ain't okay. There we go. Once I got it repositioned, yeah. These got these guys are cute. They're probably and they're nice little collectibles. You're not getting a lot of detail, or I mean, you get decent detail, but like, see how the back's not molded. But I mean, again, guys, thirteen dollars. Have your little cute Jeff Chibi gun to put on your shelf. I mean, I think they're worth it. I think they're worth it. And a quick build, relatively. 
Because bear in mind, I'm taking forever on this. Oh, man. But you guys at home, if you're not showing somebody how to do it and you're just doing it, could do it a lot faster. Or talking about doing it. So, why is one leg higher than the other? That's not... Is it just because of the... I might have one of the ball joints displaced a little bit. But, yeah, that's better. Except for the... Man. There we go. So we got her a lower half done. So, and I'll worry about getting them a little bit more situated when we got more body parts. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is the right arm which we will not be doing at least right now that part that's the gun and that we'll probably do that last so we need b7 and 8 <sighs> which are over here sorry guys if i let the get the camera the keyboard out of the way B7 and 8, which are right here. I almost lost another piece there for a second. I was like, wait, what? I was looking in the wrong spot for it. the form and then we need just cause I'm weird about things like that okay now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna glue around that circle there and might hit the inside of that just so it'll hold it a little better actually there's that little groove there where the peg goes in so I'll probably hit that too with some with some glue. Again, these will probably go together and hold just fine without the glue, but I've got it. Might as well use it, and I know it'll it'll hold. So, see there, I got a bit more than I meant to. If you can see it, it sort of pulled right there. So I'm gonna try to work that around. Set this down like that. And that's actually not the bit I wanted to even do, but it won't hurt nothing. It'll dry. Do that. <laughs> Stings pretty bad. Probably come over here to help and get some there in that track. Right there, if you can see what I'm saying. And this track right here. Maybe hit here a little bit. And then we're going to take the two parts and we're going to flip them over, sandwich them and this way I know I'm not touching glue because I'm touching the outside bits and then oh, I felt something there oh, now, the other one didn't fight me, don't you start This is not on the fit. Oh, did I have it facing the wrong way like a dingus? Might have been it. Let's see here. Yep, okay, I had it pointing the wrong way like a, a dingosaurus. That's why I wasn't going in. See, we got her. We got her. We got it. Got a little bit of glue there, but you're probably not going to see it. I'll let that sit a minute. Let's see, we're gonna 
there's a little seam line on the palm on the outside of the hand here. You can see it for sure when I hit it in the light like that. So we're gonna we're gonna get that bad boy real quick. It's the only other bad thing too about YouTube and you can't play music. So that would be something nice to have in the background All right now. Some music. Switch to my back to here a little bit. So I'm gonna be where you guys can see a little bit better. Like I said, just sort of hit it in a few spots. It's pretty close. Let me hit it off camera here a little bit. Just make sure get it get it done exactly right. Yeah, it's a little bit of texture or something right there. And that's the only downside sometimes to working with small parts. If you got big hands like I do, man, sometimes getting it where you can get a hold of it is a pain in the neck. Our little gold bit here. Let's see. It seems all right. Uh, about in the same spot. That top. A little bit of a burr. And we just want to a couple times to smooth it out. Hey, I did good there. That was quick. <laughs> quick. Probably want to look back at how long this video is. None of this is quick. So some of it we might time lapse because I feel like some of this gets a little bit repetitive. Because once you understand your basic cutting out trim clean cut out trim clean that's basically what you're painting and then you just glue stuff so let's see here which one's the the bigger piece so our pieces go together something like that so yeah I'd probably better off just going on this bottom bit maybe so Right there. And again, I'm trying to keep it reasonably away from my fingers so I don't put fingerprints in this stuff. There we go. And then one thing I will probably go back and touch up Yeah, I think I got a finger mark right there. Yeah, I'll probably go back and touch that side bit up well i don't know up here rather maybe send them two down a little bit <laughs> at a later date i'm worried about it right now because i want that glue to dry because i think i got some on the outside a little bit so we're going to just a simple super quick take this put that in there should hear a pop swivel it that the hand goes there and then shoot I should have paid more attention to which one of those I cut out probably let's see 
If you look at the hand here, this arm, the pointy bit goes, or the extended bit goes down and towards on the outer side. go and the other little gold bit will go like this and we got our other hand arm done you know I think it's this way bro where's my I'll figure it out because you can swivel them it's no big deal we'll figure out which side's which okay guys I got the chest together I might have not been recording when I assembled it and I'm sorry guys but it's together you didn't miss anything um did teach me the importance of checking I had this bit on backwards and it wouldn't I couldn't get the chest plate on so the way stuff goes on is important I opted not to glue this chest plate in case I need to paint this or I need to paint those uh chest vents so I can pull this back off for painting but that's it's together so let's get the torso in the that, that in. Nope. It's kind of in, sort of. I don't like force. Hey, hang on, let me. Let me be. Ooh, kind of. Well, that's different. Also, probably not a good sign. Let's see here. They're pulling back apart. So there we go. We got our upper and lower body. He, as I said, these don't have the most articulation in the way. He got a little bit. He got more than I thought he'd get. And then we want to put our arms on, which will go right in there. And then where did the other one go? There it is. Found it. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good, guys. We're good. We're good, man. Let's rotate the shield down. Starting to kind of look like a little bit of Gundam. We only got the head and the uh, head and the, the big blasty gun, I think. So we're getting there, guys. See, this is the rewarding part for me because see, we built the legs, did the waist, and now you got something. Even though it's out of focus, you know you can stand. So we'll put him over here. I fix my my cover again, cause you guys don't understand. My mother used to fuss at me at my grandmother's when we were going for Thanksgiving, cause I would tear up a tablecloth. So, <laughs> so this is my own personal nightmare: a fat man child versus a tablecloth. Another thing to put down in the comments, guys, if I'm doing a series like this, right, do you want me to space it out in that, say, like I was going to do, like, a figure, like, if I was going to paint this soon, so I release this one, one, the building video one week, and then the next week is the painting, would you want it to be released sequentially, so this then the next week the painting thing or am I right in trying to vary it up by like this then the next week will be like a figure or some other review and then maybe the next week would be painting so you, 
you guys aren't getting the same stuff back to back. But it does make some stuff take longer. And like the Beast Wars and stuff like that, those will, for now will probably come out at the end of the month because they take so much time to do. And that just gives me more time to get it done. Um, I'm going to look at that picture again before I cut this. Make sure those bottom pegs aren't... Okay, do not cut off the bottom peg. What I was checking is I didn't know if that bit there... See the, the little bit there where the gate connects? I didn't know if that was just to make a gate or if that was something we needed. So I double-checked the manual. It has them on there, so I'm not going to cut it off there. I'm going to cut it on the side which is looking correct okay so our little face paint plate's done and now our fancy a fancy headdress sorry guys which sometimes sanding these doesn't do you a whole lot of good even if you're not going to paint them because you're still going to see that discoloration on effect parts. Unless you just get really good at sanding. But I'm going to paint these so not a massively huge deal. Because I'm thinking about trying to maybe paint this like fire. Instead of putting the red stickers on the outside. Or something. We'll, we'll see where I get when I get into it. Like, I got time after we build it to sort of ponder before I got to make any permanent decisions okay there's all our head parts need that so we'll go to our dry fit and step just so I know how all this goes together because I want to be able to pull it back apart as well for later so back of the, oop, back of the head this thing here let me like, get a little closer look at it I mean, is it? Is that how they're? Okay. So like this. I'm guessing. Well, know if the <laughs> this would have been a good time to do a side picture of this. Yeah, it looks right. That looks right. Okay, so probably like that. <sighs> and then what they say do do the the face in next. I'm not entirely sure where the face is. Oh, probably right there because there's pegs. Our face. Face goes right in. Then we sandwich in the outer part of the helmet. Right? Like sauce. Like so. Yes. I don't know what we're going to be able to do about that seam line on the helmet. That might have to stay because that's on a lot of detail. See? We're at a little gap. It might get filled by glue when we do it. So we'll see. Okay. And then this, which. The square bit goes up. Okay. So something akin to this. All right. And I know I'm doing a lot of head squeezing sometimes, stuff needs a minute to settle. Then we, how does our little headdress go in here? So something like that, and then it goes into the top? Question mark? Maybe? Yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. Okay. That's not bad. Got a little war dress. I thought it was going to 
it does there's better gives a little more of a flare out and then let's see how easily this goes in okay it goes in pretty good now the million dollar question can you pop it back off yeah you can get it off easy enough okay so we will put the gundam eye sticker there maybe paint this up and then make this a face mask that will have its own eye sticker but that's how the toggies look so there's our uh there's our here's our head get it in focus don't have the sticker there where you see in that little bit of darkness that's where the sticker is supposed to be so i don't know this I might just have to not glue until we're done painting. Just to be safe, I can get to everything. But now let's see what it looks like on on everything. So blah 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 blah. Um I don't know about this, but let's see how it goes. Super Yeah, there we go. So there he is. With his helmet on, his little Gundam legs, and our last thing shouldn't take so long to build because it's just going to be his big old blasty gun. So let's get to it. Okay, blasty gun. What's over here? Um, it's literally like four parts. <laughs> so good. Blasty gun, right there. Right, there's the plastic gun. Okay, sorry guys, I had to pop my back a second. I know I need this, so let's just go ahead and cut her out. Um. Uh, Guys, did you take my... No, okay. Let's see which one you took my, my side cutters. I'm going to have to whip up on somebody. That and that little, that little chip that goes in the gun. Ooh, there could have been that entire chip flying off. So let's hold that chip while we cut out the other bits. Like that. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's a better idea. Okay, by me. Okay. Okay. And then this is our other three parts. Yes, sir. For our big robot laser cannon. Or maybe it's a gun gun. I don't know on this one. I think in Gundam Wing it was a gun gun. Your good old shooty pop pop gun. Sort of like a howitzer. Mm, I didn't like pulling that off like that. But it happened, so we'll live with it. Okay. There's, I guess, the main body. And it's a wonky looking barrel. <laughs> but alright, let's, let's get it. Okay, so now let's, let's trim all this stuff up. Okay. Trim. That's why I like these these better cutters. They're not something you should, I don't feel, unless you just got extra, if you got extra money, go for it. But that's also why I didn't necessarily include them in the starting kit is the $35, which is kind of expensive, in my opinion. It is not required, whereas you could get the workhorse once you soon see me use for like 15 or something that may not be quite as high quality for about 10 save you some money when you get started in the hobby so you can spend more time enjoying because it's it can be a real big letdown in these kind of hobbies minis and 
in models if oh I bought all these tools tools neat but I don't have anything to do with them so I have to wait how many ever months till you get in some more expendable however long I won't say months however long it takes you to get in some more expendable income to be able to do anything with it so the, it's really important in these kind of things to get you what you need to get you to hobby in, and then picking up some of the tools that are not essential but make things easier at a later date and you know if you end up not liking the hobby at least you didn't spend $35 on a pair of side cutters that you can't that you literally can't use for anything other than plastic and I'm not even sure how well these thin blades would handle thick plastic that's why you see me use the others for cutting it off the sprues is so if these are that delicate I don't screw up a $35 pair of side cutters when I have a $15 pair of side cutters that will do so to hurry this video up a little bit, hurrying it up, this thing's probably an hour long or more now, a couple of hours, who knows, but we'll just dry fit this and I'll worry about cleaning it up off camera for the painting episode when we get to it. So how is all this supposed to go together? Okay guys, let's see here. D goes there. So it's held like sauce and and this one's okay I guarantee you the beveledy bit goes outside so how are we how are we doing this <laughs> how are we uh I'm assuming that goes around there somehow would make sense, right? The round bit goes around the... Maybe right. Is it here? Yeah, there we go. Okay. That popped. Okay. I know how this goes together now. So... Here's the rest of the gun. Or the other side of the gun, rather. Pops together. Okay. As if that's uh, the gun's a little cheap I'm not gonna lie and then this goes how? I do what now? Assuming those actually, I think he's actually supposed to hold it like this because that's where the peg is. But we're done, guys. Oh, how long this video has been with all the starts and stops. We are finally done. Because I'm pretty sure this goes right here. And there you go. He can hold his shooty shooty gun on the shoulder and he can block the the bad guys with this and that's pretty neat so yeah it looks pretty good not bad for a, a one day little project to get them together he's cute now granted like I said these guys don't have a whole lot of articulation and he'd been nice fan of beam saber. That's a pretty cute little guy. Anyway, guys, I hope this sort of helped you understand how to use your tools a little better. I hadn't. I'll uh, see how much I cut out and speed up and edit and 
if this got ridiculously long. If it was a bit blurry, I'm sorry. I switched off autofocus, which is kind of blurry out here. Probably in hindsight, I'll set the focus for there. But I hope it sort of helped get the idea across. If you got any questions, ask in the comments below. The written article will be more of a step-by-step -step list, and it'll have some screenshots of, or some pictures of me doing this arm and this leg, which will just get the basic ideas of cut out, trim, sand, glue, assemble, and then you just repeat it for everything. But I thought it'd be cool just to sit along with me for doing one. Anyway guys, catch you next time and whatever your hobby is, share it and enjoy it. And get out there and make something. Put something together. I'll catch you next time guys. Peace.